The petitions on fundamental rights violations were filed by Ranjit Madhuma Bandara of the Samagi Janapala Vegya, Dr. Harinyamara Surya and Sunil Handurnetti of the National People's Power, Rohan Hetiarachi from the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections and the Centre for Policy Alternative. The Attorney General, Chairman and members of the National Election Commission at the time, the Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana and the Cabinet of Ministers, the Government Printer, the Inspector General of Police were among those named as respondents in the petitions. The matter was taken up before a five-judge bench comprising of Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasurya and Justices Vijit Malal Goda, Murdu Fernando, Gamini Amrasekara and Yasanta Koda Goda, and the hearings into the matter concluded on the 6th of July. In a landmark decision, the Supreme Court unanimously held that the failure to hold the local government elections in 2023 constituted a violation of fundamental rights. The court acknowledged the severe economic crisis faced by the country, which was cited by the respondents as a reason for not providing funds for the elections did not absolve the state of its responsibility to uphold fundamental rights. The court criticized the arbitrary nature of the decision-making process, particularly the failure to prioritize the funding of elections. According to the judgment, the president, who was also the finance minister, had not sufficiently informed the cabinet about the results of imposing budgetary limitations. The court held that the election commission failed to properly plan and manage the election process, and the commission did not exercise its powers to issue necessary directions to secure the cooperation of other state agencies. Rejecting all the preliminary objections raised by the respondents, the Supreme Court held that the partisan acts and omissions of the President, who is also the Minister of Finance, resulted in the infringement of fundamental rights guaranteed to the citizens under Article 12.1 and 14.1 of the Constitution. The Election Commission was directed by the Supreme Court to schedule the local government elections at the earliest possible date. The Supreme Court also ordered the state to pay costs of 150,000 rupees each to all the petitioners. Nimal Punjiheva was the chairman of the election commission at the time that the local government election was postponed. While SB Divaratna, M.M. Mohammed, K.P.P. Patirana and P.S.M. Charles were members of the commission. President's counsel Upul Jasuri appeared for the Samagi Janabala Vegya, while President's counsel Nigel Hatch appeared for the National People's Power. President's counsel Viran Korea appeared for the Centre for Policy Alternatives, while attorney Astika Devindra appeared for Pafral. Additional Solicitor General Nerin Pulle appeared for the Attorney General's Department, while President's Counsel Salia Piris appeared for the Chairman and members of the Election Commission. We will be informing the Election Commission on how to proceed with regard to this judgment when we get the full judgment. The Commission will decide on how to proceed with regard to future course of this election. The judgment that the Supreme Court delivers strengthens the Election Commission. The judgment states that the Election Commission must at all times take all necessary steps to fulfill their duties. This judgment will be important when we prepare the legal framework. This judgment will be very important for the present Commission and any future independent commissions to better fulfill their responsibilities. It was for the first time in history that a judgment was delivered by the Supreme Court that a sitting president had violated the constitution of the country. The current president is bound to abide by the constitution. Because the constitution is the supreme law, the Supreme Court has delivered a judgment saying that he has intentionally violated the supreme law of the country. The current president has, through his actions, violated the constitution. We requested for the Independent Election Commission to be given advice and orders on how to conduct elections in the future. Today that was fulfilled. This is a historic decision. We see this as a clear message to all political parties and political leaders who attempt to use loopholes in the constitution according to their whims and fancies. Therefore, this judgment has clearly indicated that no future election can be unnecessarily postponed in the future. The president knew that he was going to lose the election and therefore he did not release the funds for the election. Remember that he sabotaged the election. He influenced the government printer. He influenced the election commission. He threatened members of the election commission. He got thugs to make phone calls to them. The president acted in a manner that would allow for an election to be held in the country. 
But the Supreme Court today has defeated all of that. The president who crept through a loophole in the constitution within his short time has violated the constitution over 10 times. Rani Vikramasinghe is the leader who has violated the constitution the most. The judgment also states that the president had not informed the cabinet about the repercussions of postponing the local government election. That point in the judgment is very important. That means the executive president, as the Minister of Finance, had issued these orders without first informing the cabinet properly about the possible results of postponing the election. We can say that the dream of Ranil Vikramasinghe to become president will come to an end with this judgment. The parliament should impeach Rani Vikramasinghe for violating the constitution. Rani Vikramasinghe swept under the carpet the local government election across the entire country.